Hi, welcome to Revit for BIM Training Seminar, Session 1 The Basics, Part 15, Linking and Merging Revit Files. We're going to look at one of the features of Revit where you can bring together different project files. And the reason for doing this might be if you're part of a team and you're creating a large design, potentially a campus, you might be working on different buildings within an overall design and you might want to bring them together for visualization purposes or you might want to bring in something like a large terrain to use for visualization and that's the example we're going to use now so here's a building if you go to the insert tab see options for linking files into the project use link Revit and select my terrain You'll notice that the positioning here is auto center to center, but you might have a datum that you've already got set up or a shared coordinate system. I'm just going to stick to center to center, open that up, and we can see here a large terrain. I'm going to locate my model in put it in place by not moving my model but by moving my terrain under it. Okay so visually I'm just going to place it there. You'll notice though that my building has dug into the terrain a little bit. A good quick way of now pulling my terrain downwards so zero meets zero would be to throw a section through the building so I can see what's going on. Need to be in a 2D view for that. Go to section line. I might want to pick up this front edge here. That's fine. I can double click on the head of this section and you'll see how my building is buried into the ground. I can quite literally just grab and pull down because I'm in this side view and that allows me to bring the terrain down to a height. Check the 3D view again. Because it's a terrain it is going to be digging in there so that would be showing above my carpet in that room. One thing to remember when you've got something this big is if you haven't got anything selected it will always rotate around the center so if you want to make finer movements you need to start selecting objects to come inwards okay so that's very straightforward if I want to make changes to this terrain I have to bind it so I select it and it says bind link I get a few options as to what wants to come over. I'm going to untick them all. I just want the geometry. Okay, that. So that terrain is now in my model. If I want to make some changes, one of them might be to put a pad into this terrain so it no longer interferes with my building, or I could edit it by placing some more spot heights within it. If I was to select my terrain I'm going to now make a few changes. It's grouped. You can see that by as I hover over it the whole thing is highlighted. If I select it I get the option to either edit group or ungroup. Something this size I don't really want to ungroup it but I'm going to edit the group which takes me in this environment you see the buildings now grayed out and this is now active I'm going to select my topography go to edit surface this can take some time it's a big surface so I'm now in edit surface mode I'll zoom in and what I'm going to do is throw a contour around the back of the building. If I select one of these nodes I'm getting 
that it's the height of minus 322.4. If I go to place point, I minus 322.4 as my elevation, I can now carefully work my way around the back of the building. So giving myself a piece of flat land or a building to live on. You have to be quite patient with it. It's doing quite a lot of work depending on how powerful your machine is. OK, happy with that. Press the tick. I'm still in edits group you can see now my terrain no longer digs into my building footprint. I could also go to massing and site and put a building pad in which would do the same kind of thing. Essentially giving myself a flat level of concrete but I prefer the option I just showed you. OK, I'm happy with that. Press the tick. escape off to deselect. Now if I go to my section you'll see the terrain is nicely flat under my building. Might even consider bringing it up ever so slightly. OK. If you're following on from the previous video, you might have some sun studies that you wish to do here. Quickly show you that and turn on shadows. Go to sun settings, single day, sunrise to sunset, every 30 minutes. Level zeros, ground plane, apply. OK. And now I can get a preview of that. You'll see, I guess, a sun study. The last thing I want to explain about what we've just done is the fact that when we bind a file into Revit, it's in fully and so the memory increases dramatically and if somebody else is working on that other file you no longer have a live link back if you just link either Revit files or even AutoCAD files then it is a live link and if you make changes to the original file you can go to manage links and update okay that's enough for this video thanks very much